everyone. This is Sean O'Loughlin, Principal Pops Conductor for Symphoria. And today we're going to talk about uh, John Williams' greatest themes as part of Symphoria's Edu series. And it's a real uh, personal uh, theme for me because I'm just a big fan of John Williams' music and, and the way he creates what they call light motifs, which is a, a recurring theme or a musical element that uh, keeps coming back in a film and helps tell the story. So when you see, you know, like a Luke Skywalker on the screen, you'll hear. And we'll talk about what makes that a hero theme. There's also villain themes, of course. And then there's also the concept of moods or uh, different emotions that you can show through thematic elements in music. And of course, this applies to more composers than just John Williams. But we're so fortunate to have our uh, John Williams music tribute for our first pop series that it, it seemed pretty natural to use John's music that is so widely recognized and, and well known throughout the, the genre. So well, let's talk about hero themes. What really makes a hero theme? So we just showed Luke Skywalker. So there's that ascending fifth of just kind of gives you a real heroic sense right, right off the bat. So it has a wonderful, you know, lilt up and then a lilt down and very, very strong. And he even uses that kind of same idea with Superman. So you hear that ascending fifth, which is a very common uh, tool of his or a musical kind of element that he likes to include to get that heroic thing. And then of course there's Indiana Jones, which I think also sounds like zippity doo -dah. But don't tell John I said that, so. Wow, I have to learn that one again. There we go. So it has a really nice upward lifting, and that's another element that makes it heroic, is the music goes up a lot instead of going down, which really creates kind of that really heroic kind of big strong thing. And then the use of major chords will give us a much more heroic than minor. And speaking of minor, minor is a chord, uh, minor chords are a way to kind of create that almost scary villainous type thing. And of course the biggest, baddest villain of all time is this one. associates obviously Darth Vader and Star Wars but that theme was not introduced until the second film in the series Empire Strikes Back and but John used um, minor chords in the original Star Wars film if you go back and watch that to kind of create that um, that Darth Vader kind of quality without having a, a specific theme to him but once that Darth Vader Imperial March theme came uh, it's it was done every time we saw Darth Vader from there on out we heard that theme and now another way to kind of create a scary villainous thing is to have really repetitious low notes. So there's two notes that come to mind that are very, very famous. And I know now you don't wanna go swimming. I know you don't, but the theme to Jaws is just one of those most iconic moments and won John an Academy Award with two notes, who knew? Obviously there's more to it than that, but that repetitive kind of haunting thing uh, really, really kind of frames this. And, you know, John is a student as much as he is a master composer. And there's a, a piece of music that is one of my favorites. I call it the Bible, um, but Rite of Spring by uh, Igor Stravinsky, the, the wonderful ballet. And you'll hear where John kind of, you know, we're all influenced by what we hear no matter what we do. And there's this wonderful kind of almost uh, just like this really natural kind of grovelly thing at the beginning where uh, like salt of the earth kind of thing where you can hear that John got that pulse. So you can hear that he gets his influences from the classical world and, and in this case Stravinsky which I get I my influence as well and, and so you can hear a little bit of that Jaws quality of it uh, coming through. Now you know so we have our hero themes, we have our, our villain themes and then there's the other thing we talked about called 
you know, moods or feelings, like how do we create these different feelings? So for example, uh, take flying. Flying music tends, and John Williams says uh, something about flying, is it, it requires a lot of notes. Now my piano, my limited piano abilities, I can't play all the notes, but you know, some of the examples of flying, and in fact that you'll hear on our Pops concert, um, is the music from Hook, and it has just this wonderful. light pulsing underneath and then this big soaring melody up top and you can almost see Peter Pan whisking away to Neverland um, as you hear that music kind of just framing to it. That's actually a sequence called Flight to Neverland. So it's very, very transparent of what John was trying to create uh, with that music. And then also one of the biggest kind of flying moments in uh, John Williams' catalog is that very iconic scene at the end of E.T. where he flies over and then they, they have the you know, the frame shot with the moon with E.T. and Elliot on the bike. And, you know, that theme, again, has a really soaring quality to it. It starts with that, that um, major fit, or the perfect fit that we talked about, has a really heroic quality. And it just keeps going up, up, up there. And just when you thought John couldn't go any higher, it keeps going and going. And when you think about it, it's a really challenging melody to sing. It has this very athletic quality to it and this jumping, but that jumping kind of has this opening up feel to it. And you can just see, you know, this, it's suspension of disbelief to that ET, this alien will now all of a sudden be able to fly and make Elliot's bike fly. So there's that magical moment of it. And John also uh, accompanies that big soaring melody with a, a pulsing um, eighth note underneath. <laughs> that sense of lift and, and feeling with the, the eighth notes underneath and then this big soaring melody going through there. And then there's the, the feeling of sadness, right? There's this somber tone and um, we're, we're performing the music of Schindler's List, which is this incredibly profound, uh, somber piece of music. And John, of course, uses minor key for that. I'll just play a little bit of the opening. transportation into that, that feeling um, of, of you know, sadness, profound, um, uh, just somberness of, of going through there. So we'll hear music like that. And then scary is another one of my favorites. It's so fun to write scary music and John uses it. We saw in, in Jaws. So that dissonance, that repetitiveness. There's also a very famous sequence in the movie Psycho uh, where Bernard Herrmann is the composer of that. And he literally takes minor sevenths stacked up going down. So. And again, you hear that repetitive, that kind of you know, dissonant kind of feel to it, the rub that makes it you know, incredibly scary. And then if you, you have things that kind of pop out, it, you don't really expect another way to create some scary music along the way. And then there's one of my, I just want to conclude with this, you know, we can kind of go on and on about all the different moods and all that, but one of my um, kind of more fa favorite um, music to write and music to listen to is that innocence or nobility where, um, you know, for example, these warm, warm sounds. And um, there's a wonderful score that John wrote for the movie JFK, which tells the story of John F. Kennedy or uh, the, president that was assassinated, but there was this noble quality because JFK represented at the time in the early 60s of such hope and optimism. He was a young, attractive president and he was very charismatic. And John wrote this beautiful theme that captures like that hope and promise um, of, a, of a president. <laughs>
So you can tell it has just this no, noble quality to it. And he even, it just in his brilliance, translated that same feeling of when in Jurassic Park, awkward, awkward <laughs> transition, going from JFK to Jurassic Park, but in Jurassic Park, when you first see these uh, nine beautiful brontosauruses in that first iconic scene, and you hear this wonderful theme. <laughs> So you can see that noble quality, even with, with the dinosaurs that we think are really, really benign and gentle, then all of a sudden they chase us down. And of course, John frames that music <laughs> appropriately when we become into the scary part of it and not the noble part anymore. So I hope this has been a little bit of a, a real fun examination of what makes a theme heroic, villainous, scary, happy, flying, and all the like. So, um, thank you for joining me today on our Symphoria Edge series, and we look forward to seeing you next time.